First part of yesterday's homework was simply to change the heading when we click the button. Uh, we basically did that yesterday on code pin. So nothing that we haven't already learned. We already grabbed the button with JavaScript using query selector. Uh, query selector versus something like get element by ID, which you may be more familiar with. Nice thing about query selector is it's more flexible. You don't have to have an ID on an element. You can grab it by any number of things because uh, selector syntax can get quite complex. So you don't necessarily even have to change your markup just to be able to grab it this way. And anytime you can avoid changing the markup um, is good as far as I'm concerned. Although there's nothing wrong with changing the markup if it's appropriate to do so. So anyway, I like query selector. because We can use it for all sorts of occasions. So we want something to happen when we click the button. What do we want to happen? We want to change a heading. So we can, uh, we can always use a regular old function declaration, function change heading. Or as we know, we could also uh, do it like a variable const change heading equal function. There's a slight difference between the two, but for our purposes right now, there's no effective difference. And how should that work? That should grab the heading. So query selector h1 seems to be a fine selector. Uh, I'll make a variable called heading. Set it to document.querySelector h1. Then I just want to change the text content to anything. Now, right now, when we run the page, nothing much will happen. It will grab this from the page, save it in a variable, and it will create this function, but nothing will ever actually happen, right? So we need to start listening for that click to happen. So the button is the thing we're clicking, so the button is the element we need. Button dot add event listener. Event listener takes two arguments. One, what we're listening for. We're listening for a click. And two, what we want to happen when the click occurs, and that is change heading. Not the return value of change heading, but change heading itself. The actual function is the argument that we're passing in, which is called a callback. Anytime you pass one function as an argument to another. Why? Because somewhere in the definition of this function, it's calling this function back. Refresh the page. Yay, we did it. That's the first part of the homework, right? No problem. So we, of course, want to now save a new version of our app because we just got something new done. Something works that didn't work before. That is a mighty fine time to uh, make our changes a permanent part of our repository. So we'll talk again more about how Git works exactly. But right now we know there's a two-step process to get this to be a permanent part of our repository. We must first add it so that Git will even pay attention to it at all. And we learned the command yesterday, git add. We could just add the part that changed. Let's do a git status to see where we are exactly. Okay, index.js has changed since our last commit. So we could just say git add index.js, or we could say git add dot to just pick up all the changes. If we do that and we do get status, it says that is a change to be committed. This has changed from red to green. Christmassy again. But it is not yet committed, so we need to commit. So this is going to add a checkpoint, essentially. And we want to name it so that we know what stage in our history this checkpoint is at. So what did we just do? Uh, we just made it so that the Heading gets updated when we click the button. So update heading on button click. Seems like a good message. If I type git log, now I see uh, initial commit from yesterday. I had add a button in day one homework at the very end of class yesterday, and then update heading on button click just now. So that makes it very easy. If I ever want to go back and see um, how I made that button click work, I can go right back to this commit because now it is a checkpoint in my project's history. But it still lives only on my laptop. So to get it on GitHub, we have to type git push. Again, more about all these different commands and exactly what they mean. But 
To make it a permanent part of our history, we need git add and git commit. But that still is all on our laptop. We can save all, all versions of our app on our laptop without ever using any other cloud service or anything. Or we can use some sort of cloud service to sync it, in which case we need to type push to do that. So that's what we've done. 